Hello, this is Peter Wielander, Process Industries Editor for Control Engineering Magazine, and welcome to our third of our videos from Peter's Basement. You'll see that we're upstairs again today because we're also doing a second video with our tank here, and we're going to use a different way of measuring level in it. Remember in our last episode, we were measuring the level of the liquid inside the tank by using a pressure gauge attached to the bottom using the static pressure of the contents to tell us how much is inside there. Today we're going to take a different approach. We're going to say for the sake of argument that we can't get anything, any measurement from the bottom of the tank. We can't make another penetration into it or we can't get at it. But for some reason, in this case, instead of measuring the tank from the bottom, we're going to have to measure the tank from the top. Now there are all sorts of different technologies that you can use when you want to measure something from the top down. You could put a, a radar level gauge on here or an ultrasonic or a magnetostrictive. All those technologies work, but let's say this is a low grade application. This is something where the budget's a little tight and we really don't have the money to go out and buy one of those more sophisticated technologies. So we're going to try something a little different, something basic, but that works. Kids know that one of the advantages of having a straw when you're drinking your milk is that you can blow through the straw and make bubbles. Now, the little kids that grow up to be engineers are the ones that realize that the deeper the milk is, or the water in this case, the harder you have to blow. Now, does that tell us something about the depth? Maybe we can quantify that and put it to work. Here's a more sophisticated version of that same setup. This time, I've got a longer straw in effect, but I've also cut in a pressure gauge that will allow us to measure how hard I have to blow to make the bubbles form in the glass. The pressure gauge in this case is calibrated from zero to eight inches of water. So now we're gonna blow in it and let's see what we see. The pressure gauge was reading just over three inches. And if I take a ruler and measure the depth of the water in the glass, it is just over three inches. So this time we have a bigger glass, so we're going to need a bigger straw. What I have is a piece of uh, half inch PVC tubing. What I'm going to do is try and wrestle this into the tank, and it's long enough to reach all the way to the bottom. So let's get this inserted. Okay, now that's on the bottom. What I'm going to do is attach a line to the top that will go back to a compressed air supply. So now we've inserted our straw into the top of the tank and it goes all the way down to the bottom. This is the compressed air line that's attached to the straw. It goes down here to the tank, but then teed into that line, we have another line that goes over here to this Rosemount 3051 pressure sensor given to us by the nice folks at Emerson Process Management. And so now when we put air into the line and try to blow bubbles in the tank, the pressure sensor will tell us how much air is required to get the bubbles to come out. So let's see what happens. Watch the gauge as we release air into the tank. Hopefully we'll be able to hear the bubbling. I think we can hear that. Okay, the pressure sensor says that we have about 51 and a half inches of liquid in the tank because that's the amount of pressure that it took to displace the liquid inside the tube. Now, if you notice, we also have this handy little sight glass here that uh, gives us an external reading of the level, and there's the level right there. So let's take our ruler and see what we've got. Hmm. Look at that. Okay, so we've just proven to ourselves that the uh, technology works. So let's think about where this might be applicable. 
Obviously, you have to be able to approach the tank from the top, but you don't have to have any other penetrations into the tank below the water line. This works best in situations where the liquid has a density relatively close to water, but you could compensate for it for something else if you needed to. It also is going to work well in a situation where, let's say, the, the contents of the tank are a slurry or have a lot of debris in there. This thing, this approach is very useful in the, that it is a self-clearing approach. As long as you can blow air through the tube, you can get a reading. So even if it's, you know, something else might be clogged, this would resist that. And as long as the pressure is enough to clear the tube, you can work in even a clog-prone environment. Of course, there are some drawbacks. The tank has to be vented. Uh, this wouldn't really be a practical approach if you were working with a pressurized tank. Uh, the liquid that's in there has to tolerate having whatever it is bubble through it, assuming air in most cases. So the liquid, has, the, the liquid has to tolerate having air bubbling through it. And obviously this uh, approach requires compressed air. Uh, so if you're in a situation where compressed air is very expensive, this may not be the way to go. Although you don't have to leave it running all the time. If you want a constant measurement, yes, the air has to be going all the time. But if you only want the, the measurement intermittent, you have to turn it on and off. Of course, if you're trying to come up with some automated solution for that, you might be getting into something more complicated and, a, and there might be better technologies for that. If you're pairing it with some type of electronic gauge like the 3051, you can send the data to your control system and you could set alarm levels and, and know that when the, the, the liquid level gets too high or too low, it could trigger an alarm in the control room. Or you could just do it with a plain old analog gauge if you want an intermittent reading of, say, a tank uh, a sludge tank or, or some kind of tank that's collecting liquid under your building or something like that where you can just stick the straw down there as you need it and take the readings when necessary. So this is a very versatile approach. It's very simple and as you see it can be very accurate. So keep watching for additional videos from the basement or upstairs as the case may be. For Control Engineering this is Peter Wielander. Thanks for watching.